Juvelin is an exciting motorbike coaster at Jura Summerland. This is surprisingly Denmark's longest roller coaster, and it's a real crowd pleaser. I remember seeing this ride in the top 50 of the final Mitch Hawker poll that was conducted, and I was a bit confused why it would appear to be a family coaster placed that highly. Now I get it. Find out why this ride is so good in this review. Juvelin opened back in 2013, and it was placed in the park's Mexico land section. The ride station and queue is housed in this giant temple, and it looks great. You have some nice rock work on the outside, then the inside has some ruins and jewels, and that makes sense because Juvelin literally translates to jewel. The ride itself is somewhat elusive. Most of the ride stays low to the ground, and it's blocked by the station trees and rocks. You can really only see the first launch that's smartly placed next to the queue in midway to build anticipation, and then one or two of the ride's few large hills. But the parts you can see do look solid, with the green track and the red trains that really pop. The latter are the secret sauce for the experience. These trains are themed to look like ATVs, and they allow guests to ride in the motorbike position. Guests can lean forwards and hold onto the handlebars. It's a simple thing, but this is a different riding position than we're accustomed to on a coaster, and it accentuates the sense of speed. That's what this ride does best. Riders are secured by a U-shaped lap bar that rests really low on your thighs. Just beware if you're wider. I'm pretty thin at 165 pounds, yet I struggle to fit, but there is a catch to that. It was because of my shorts. I'm the type of person who only brings what they can fit into their cargo shorts when I go to an amusement park. I had issues getting the restraint down if I had my digital camera and my tube of sunscreen in my pockets. They bulged outwards enough to interfere with the restraint. I had no trouble if I put these items off to the side, but I've never had to do that on any other coaster. There are two trains, each consisting of nine rows of two, so each train seats up to 18 riders. On the summer weekend day I visited, Juvelin often had the park's longest line. Midday, it was hovering around the 40 to 60 minute mark. Trains were being steadily dispatched. The ride is just a crowd pleaser. Mexico isn't one of the first lands people encounter, so not too many people will be riding it during the first hour or two. And then I was able to walk onto the coaster for back-to-back -back rides at the end of the night. As for which seat you'll want, I highly recommend the front. That is the row that most surprised me. You get the best sense of speed by far. It is the best sense of speed I've felt on any motorbike coaster. Once dispatched, you hear a tribal beat and roll into a dark ride scene. You see these large glowing rock statues. The music intensifies and the colors change. It gets you hyped for your ride. The doors open and you roll outside to launch one. Juvelin has tire propelled launches. This isn't the flashiest propulsion method, but it has a nice kick to it. You really feel like you're yanked down the launch track. You then zip around the first of many low turns, getting a decent blast of positive forces. That leads into a large camelback, one of the few high points on the ride. If there's one flaw with Juvelin, it's the lack of airtime in hills like this. You have a handful of hills that look like they should give airtime, but they're just too gradual to do so. You then navigate a gentle overbank, a low S bend with some mild positives, and a tight turn into launch two. This concludes the first half. In many ways, this feels like a warm up. Outside of that initial launch and turn, this part isn't too wild, but it has the benefit of allowing you to appreciate the ride's surroundings. The ride's in close proximity to abundance of trees, and then a few turns pass by and through ruins. Now the second half is what makes Juvelin special. Launch 2 accelerates you to your max speed of 53 miles per hour or 85 kilometers per hour. The launch starts slow, but it really kicks in halfway down the launch track. You really get yanked through the end of the launch. It feels like you're being peeled backwards. I was stunned how fast this coaster felt at this point. The next few turns hug the ground and occur in rapid fire succession. It feels like you're going 10 to 20 miles per hour too fast, but as a thrill seeker, I love it. This ride feels out of control. The first low turn actually has some really good force to it, and after being pulled through that, you charge through an S-bend. This passes by some rocks and a waterfall. The close call really enhances the speed, but you're going so fast you can barely process what you pass while you're on ride. This sequence reminds me of the final section of Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Islands of Adventure, between how fast you're going and the whippy elements, except Juvelin still has quite a bit more ride left. Juvelin then turns into a low S hill. 
you have great speed over the element, but it only gives very weak weightlessness. That's followed by another punchy turn and an elongated bunny hill. Again, no airtime, but you're still carrying a considerable amount of speed. Juvelin then turns into the home stretch, which kicks things off with another stretched out bunny hill and a larger camelback. I am surprised the second half's largest element occurs so late in the ride, but I've never heard this ride valleying, which makes sense because of how much speed it holds. Juvelin then has one last and moderately forceful low turn before hopping into the brakes, giving a very weak pop of airtime. This ends the 3,281 foot or 1,000 meter long coaster, and all of that is very smooth. This is a super rideable coaster. So what would I rate Juvelin? I would give this multi-launch coaster an 8 out of 10. This is a really fun ride. This ride is made by the motorbike style seating. It really allows the coaster to go all in on the sense of speed, and the layout is brilliantly designed to lean into that. The launch is of good kick, and then you have a series of decently forceful low turns as you whiz past trees and ruins. And then you have that standout sequence at the start of the second half that takes my breath away every single time. I still cannot believe how much speed you take those elements with. And I think it's the best motorbike coaster I've done outside of Hagrid's. It's not too surprising this layout was cloned for Yukon Quad at La Paul in France, because it does a lot well. The minimal height appeals to families, but that speed can appease even the most critical of thrill seekers. So those are my thoughts on Juvel and Adjure Summerland. What are your thoughts on this motorbike coaster? Were you blown away by the start of the second half like me? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.